before we start, let's appreciate the rainbow. Round of applause for the rainbow. Hello everyone and welcome back to Saigo Stance Podcast. My name is Alex and during high school, I was a chronic overachiever and perfectionist. It has now been a year since I've graduated. I've taken a gap year and in the second half of my gap year, I started working. And I'd like to say that I've learned a decent amount about how to no longer live off of that academic validation and being able to live outside of the structure that school gives you. So today I am going to list eight things that I learned in the past year and really bring light to this because while everyone goes through it, I feel like it's not talked about enough. I feel like they say, oh, the transition to adulthood is hard and then they leave it at that. They don't go into depth and I feel like people really need to see someone experiencing the same thing going through the same stuff to know that they are not alone and boy did I go through it and I'm still going through it and I've only just recently learned how to live with it and be okay with it and just everything so if you are in the same situation as me just in your gap year and not really understanding what's happening or you're about to graduate and are starting to ask these questions about hmm, what's going to happen what am I going to do keep on watching and I hope to enlighten you and just know that you are not alone number one I learned to slow down. Now this seems like a no-brainer, right? But when it comes to school, especially when you are an overachiever, you always feel the need to rush to do everything at 110% speed. You always have a flow of projects, assignments. So when you graduate, you still feel the need to keep up with that speed. It's like you're going so, so fast and then all of a sudden it just completely drops when your brain still thinks that you have to keep on going just as fast. Hello, Editing Alex here. I wanted to jump in every once in a while in this video because I wanted to talk about specific experiences that I had in regards to these lessons. So back when I graduated and I was trying to commit myself to more creative projects, I would feel like I had to maintain this speed when it came to everything that I was doing. And so when I would maintain that speed, I would get done a lot faster than usual, or at least what I had planned. And what would happen is that I would be left with a lot of free time and I would then convince myself that I was being lazy because I had all this free time when no, I was still trying to keep that speed that school had taught me to keep. And it was causing me to just go really fast in all the things that I was doing so instead of finding more things to do during my free time I would just beat myself up because I wasn't doing anything quote-unquote wasn't doing anything so yeah that's just a personal experience that I had Uh, newsflash you don't have to maintain that speed once you graduate it's okay to not do something as fast as possible if you have a project slow your pace down enjoy it you may pick up on things or notice things that you otherwise wouldn't have noticed had you not slowed down literally force yourself to not do something fast. I literally had to force myself to slow down and to take longer with like creative projects than I would have liked to, to teach myself and teach my body that I did not have to be going that fast. This window is so bright. One second, guys. Can we all appreciate my shower curtain as a window curtain? Thank you very much. Number two is that I learned to no longer rely on external validation. With school, there is always someone telling you whether you did good or not, and your entire curriculum relies on reaching a certain number or a certain letter or a certain percentage. And so after school, when you are doing things that no longer suit that criteria, you lose that sense of direction, and in turn, you lose the incentive to work hard. Story number two of how this directly related to my life. When it came to YouTube or when it came to literally anything that I was trying to do, I had no one else to keep me accountable so I would not do it. And it took me a very long time of me not doing things to finally sit down and be able to do them. You have no idea how many times I've tried to make YouTube videos and I ended up just not making it because I would just quit halfway. Like no no one's keeping me accountable. This is just something that I want to do. If I don't want to do it anymore, I won't do it. But internally it's like, it's like I do want to do it. Like I've been wanting to do this for so long I've always wanted to do YouTube videos but because there's no external validation but because there's no one telling me to do it I'm not going to do it that internal conversation really limits yourself and you have to really learn to fight it and create a system for yourself to allow you to reach these things especially on the ones that aren't being graded for the past six months with my podcast I've been able to keep relatively consistent posting schedule because I've set myself to post once a week allowing me the entire week to prepare an episode outline film it edit it, I am able to maintain that. And I'm not forcing myself to post two to three episodes a week because then it'll just cause burnout. So definitely pacing yourself and giving yourself time to express yourself creatively and not being so hard on yourself and being okay if you don't reach certain expectations. Just just do it, please. Just try your best. You got this. There's no one keeping you
you accountable other than yourself. And you've never really had to keep yourself accountable with projects or things like that the entire time that you did school. You always had to rely on other people. So getting to a point where all of that validation and achievement is now based on whether you think you've reached it or not, it's very scary. And you start to just not try hard. So I definitely learned to, instead of reaching for that external validation, really look into myself and determine whether or not I achieved a certain thing. I decide whether or not I did good. And I know that sometimes we can be harsh on each other, but really learning to look deep within ourselves to find that validation is really important and really good for self-understanding and self-love and being independent. And it also teaches you how to learn things at your own pace. I don't have someone else telling me whether I'm doing good or bad. I can just make mistakes and not have to worry about other people. Number three is that I learned that I'm allowed to do nothing. Like when I had graduated high school, I had completed 12 consecutive years of school and yet I still felt like I had to be doing something right after I graduated. I felt like I needed to be doing something because if I didn't do something, I thought that I was being unproductive or not using my time wisely. When no, can we just like allow ourselves to rest for a second? Like you tried so hard during school. Can we rest for a second? <clears throat> Can we allow ourselves to rest for a second? Please allow yourself to rest for a second. The day right after I graduated or just like completed my assignments, I was so exhausted that I could barely get out of bed. All of that energy that I used to complete my schoolwork and to just go through high school, it just all completely collapsed and I was my body was able to just bleh, just to rest. And yet I still felt like I had to be doing something like, oh, I'm not using my time wisely. Like, no, shut up. Take a rest. You deserve it. You are allowed to do nothing because you did so much for your entire life, essentially. You no longer really have any like school deadlines, so don't allow your brain to convince yourself that you have to act like you have one. Number four is that I learned that there's no need to be perfect. Who? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Who would have thought that a perfectionist wants to be perfect? Newsflash, you will never be perfect, and that's okay because no one is going to be perfect. When I left school, I I was introduced to so many new things and so much more knowledge and when I started getting my jobs all the jobs kind of involved things that I wasn't necessarily super good at because I was also working with professionals in their field in that certain area of work. Of course I wasn't going to be perfect and of course I wasn't going to be as good as these professionals and that was okay. They're there to teach me like they know that I am a beginner. I don't have to be perfect the first week that I start working with them and yet I somehow convinced myself that I had to. So allowing yourself to just mess up a few times, try something new, you don't have to be perfect at it because no one's going to be perfect the very first time they try something. Believe it or not, the world's not going to end if you're not perfect. It took me a while to figure that out. I thought that the world was going to end if I wasn't perfect enough, if I wasn't good enough. When the world is not going to end, it's going to continue and you're going to learn and you're going to get right back up and you're going to try again. I should be a public speaker. Number five is that I realized there's a lot of things that I don't know and school did not prepare me for it. Everyone always tells you that and in general, everyone brings up, oh, high school doesn't teach you anything about the real life. And honestly, that's kind of accurate. High school taught me how to write a resume. High school never taught me to write a cover letter. I had to learn how to write a cover letter on my own. Well, actually, I did use Skillshare, but high school taught me what taxes were, but never showed me how to actually file them. High school taught me what a credit card payment looked like, but never taught me how to actually responsibly use my credit card to build my credit and to not fall into debt. High school taught me things, but didn't teach me how to act on them. When the rest of my life, I am going to have to be acting on them. Instead of me doing exercises on learning how to create a budget or how to file taxes, I instead needed to prioritize my last PE credit because without it, I wasn't going to be able to graduate. There's so many things that high school is not going to teach you and you're going to have to learn with time and experience, especially because me specifically, I did a US curriculum and I live in Mexico. So everything that I learned essentially about like the real world or economic or government. It was for a country that I don't live in. <laughs> I'm also like learning all these things because also like with Mexico, elections just happened. And while I currently cannot vote, I can vote next time. I essentially have to start from scratch learning about all these things when high school was supposed to teach me. I feel like I'm a very, I'm in a very specific situation, but whatever. Be prepared 
do not know things. Don't expect to know everything because you aren't going to know everything and be open to learning about new things. The sixth thing that I learned is that I'm allowed to change the structure of my day. Again, who would have thought? With high school or just school in general, you have a straight up structure to your day, right? Because, well, you wake up in the morning, you get ready, you maybe train if you're an athlete, and then you go to school, and then you have after school activities, or you just like go home and do nothing. You have the exact same structure throughout essentially the entire 12 years that you go to school. And so once that structure is removed from you, you start to freak out. Like, what? My days are no longer structured for me. I have to structure them myself? What? And the big thing that I learned is that I don't have to follow the structure that school gave me the entire time that I did school. I can try something else. I don't have to get my work done as soon as possible. Maybe I can start work at 12, maybe. Maybe I can start work at three if I really wanted to. There's so many ways that you can change your daily routine and try things that better suit the way that you work, whether you're a morning person, a night person, whatever. Try out new things. You have the opportunity to learn how you work. So take advantage of that. Guys, I think we lost rainbow, I'm sorry. Number seven is who you are in high school is not gonna be who you are for the rest of your life. And again, I feel like everyone says that, but I'm going to tell you again, as a person who has literally just experienced this transition, you're not gonna be the same person. You have no idea how much I've changed in the past year since I've graduated. I am a completely different person and I'm a completely different person than I was in middle school. Things are going to change. You are going to develop new beliefs, new ideologies. So don't expect that you're going to be the exact same person. And I also do mean this in the sense of being a perfectionist overachiever. Your grades in high school and your achievements in high school are going to essentially mean nothing in a few years once you go into the job force and once you go to college. So don't base your success or validation on what you did in high school because that's ultimately going to mean nothing in a few years. It already means nothing for me. <laughs> Number eight and last one is that I learned to do things I'm interested in with zero guilt. Now this took a really really long time to figure out in the past year or so and I still am struggling with it every once in a while but when I was in high school there were so many things where like oh I just don't have the time to take on this hobby or do this thing. I always felt like oh I could just be using that time for school especially because I'll I'll bring this up. I did an online school, so everything was self-paced. So if I really wanted to, I was able to get ahead. Who knows how long? Like, I finished my last semester of high school two months early. So that kind of gives you an idea of how I viewed my productivity throughout high school. But yeah, now that I don't have high school, I have so much more time. And I am allowing myself to do creative projects, to try out new hobbies. I'm finally allowing myself to do YouTube because I always felt like it was a waste of time. Like I could be doing something better with my day, but no, let me do YouTube. And I also started a podcast called the Staggered Stance Podcast and just everything. I'm, I'm finally learning that I can have fun and I can do things. I can hang out with my friends and not want to prioritize completing an assignment over seeing my friends. That's what would happen, guys. I would prioritize completing assignments and getting ahead over seeing my friends. That is not healthy. That is not okay. Do not do that. I'm going to end this video with a little quote that I wrote myself. It's like a little script and it's called I'm scared to graduate and I wrote this before I graduated before I was done with high school and I just want to show it to you just so you can see what I was going through and if this resonates with you just know that things are going to get better you're going to figure it out it says I'm going to have a lot of free time now that I am not giving five to seven hours of my day to school and that scares me. I'm the type of person that always has to be doing something, whatever I am doing has to be productive in some way or another. And if I cannot fill my day with productive activities, my day was a failure. I'm going to learn to accept the stillness and quiet of a normal day, not felt with the necessity to turn in assignments. School for me and for basically everyone in the world is practically all you think about for 18 to 22 years of your life. I never felt like I could truly rest because the next day I had school or I had a project coming up or homework or a late assignment. Anything involving school, I was thinking about it. So when I am done with school, what the heck am I going to think about? What the heck am I going to think about? Well, I have a lot to think about now and it feels nice. And I am slowly filling up my time with things that I do find enjoyable and I'm genuinely excited to do. I hope this kind of cleared up your mind and answered some of your questions. If you have any other questions or experiences, please comment down below and let's just talk about it. Let's have a conversation and just share our experiences just to know that you are not alone. Again, if you have any other questions, please comment down below and I will be answering them. Okay, that is all. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys later. Bye-bye.